Any film done by the Salklands should be easy for a nitpicker like me to pick out, especially as this film came out after the atrocious Superman 3 and the equally atrocious Supergirl, you'd think I would find lots of flaws with this film. Let's see what I found, shall we? Santa Claus the Movie is a 1985 British-American Christmas film starring Dudley Moore, John Lithgow and David Hilderson. It's, the story actually just tells the story, origin stories of Santa Claus, how he became Santa Claus and what drove him to start with from when he first started all the way up to present day, or in this case 1985. When the film was released though, it was a financial failure and it received mostly negative reviews. But since then, it has become a beloved cult classic and it is still uh, loved today. But what was wrong with it? Well, let's talk about that. 10 things wrong with Santa Claus the movie. Number 10, Santa's dead. Okay, probably not the best way to start a video about Santa Claus, but I'm being serious. At the beginning of this film, Santa Claus, or Uncle Claus as all the kids used to call him, he died. Seriously. He was going from one house to another house. It was too cold, the reindeer fell over, they were freezing to death, his wife was dying, he's run and cuddled up to her and they fall unconscious. Now in the next scene, the reindeer are pretty much under snow, so they were there for some time. So Santa Claus, he died. Not a way you want to start a film about Santa Claus by killing him. I'm glad kids didn't actually get that reference because I only got that when I watched it for this review. Number nine, bed swapping. Now for anyone who thinks I'm on about swinging, you sick person you, no, no, we're not talking about swinging, but we are talking about bed swapping because when the elves wake up each day, they walk to the end of the bed and they turn the name tag. So someone else sleeps in that bed the next night. Apart from the fact, why? Why can't you have your bed every single night? Would you want to sleep in a bed that your friend slept in the night before and then sleep in another bed the next night? No, you're all right. I'll have just one bed, thank you. End of. Doesn't really make sense, does it? Number eight, cupboard bed. Okay, yeah, it looks like I'm getting a bit of a fetish about beds after talking about swapping and now a bed in the cupboard. But it's true, Santa's bed is in a cupboard. And the cupboard, it doesn't cover the whole, you know, bed. It's only a small, small uh, area. Now, when he opens it, you actually see his wife is on the far side of the door. Now, what if she wanted to get up and he's asleep? She's got to get over him to get out that small cupboard door. These are the world's best toy makers and you put them in a bed like that. Really? Number seven, bad wig. Burgess Meredith makes a cameo appearance, uh, although it's not really a cameo because he gets uh, credited for it, but he makes an, an appearance as the ancient one, the oldest elf of all time. And in this film, he is wearing a wig which is so appalling. It's awful. You can actually see the lines and the creases of this wig. Who thought they did a good job on that? That's appalling. Come on, you can do better than that, although they did make some appalling films, but... Come on, you can do better than that, can't you? Number six, say no to drugs. So in a film all about magic and wonder, how do they make the reindeer fly? Well, they drug their food, end of. That's what they do, they give reindeer food with a little bit of something in it, that's supposed to be magical, to make them fly. No, sorry. It could have done it any other way. The previous two uh, Santa films, it was all done by the Christmas spirit. Great, I, I buy that. I'm happy with that. But you just sprinkled magic dust into a reindeer's food to make them fly. No, that's just wrong. Especially when this film came out, steroids were all the rage and against st steroid use in the uh, media. But no, it's just, just wrong. End of. Why are you drugging these poor reindeer? Number five, Dudley Moore. Dudley Moore is quite a funny actor and he does get the job well done. But this wasn't a Dudley Moore film. This was a film about Santa Claus and yet Dudley Moore has more screen time than Santa Claus. And I don't like that. 
I'm watching a film that chronicles the life of Santa Claus, so I want to watch Santa Claus. I don't want to watch Dudley Moore. If I want to watch Dudley Moore, I'll go and watch Arthur. Not this, not this film. But literally every single other scene, Dudley Moore's there. And he doesn't need to be. Why? Why cast Dudley Moore in the first place? Just because you want to work with him. It, although he does the role well, he was just too much. And he had too much to say. I mean, Patch wasn't his original name. Patch was his son's nickname, but he wanted to be called that in this film. And then um, that leads me on to the next point. Number four, third act. So most of the film, or the majority of the film, it chronicles the life of Santa Claus. It starts off with his origins, how he became Santa Claus, how he got the famous red costume, how he actually started off delivering toys around the world. And it goes all the way from the 14th century to the 20th century today, or 1985. And then the film takes a hard left and tells the story about Patch in his, and Be Easy. No, that's not what I wanted to watch. I didn't care about that last act. I always, even as a kid, hated the ending of this film because it detracted of what I wanted to watch. I want to watch Santa Claus make the first part of the film more in depth, more better, expand it out a little bit and just have that. Not this whole end thing where corporate greed is getting in the way because that showed in this film as well. Number three. Christmas 2. As I've previously said in other videos, I'm a cynic when it comes to Christmas. So the last thing someone like me wants to hear is Christmas 2. Now I know it's a joke, but it was a bad joke. Most kids will probably saw it and say, yay, can we have a second Christmas throughout the year? And all the parents are probably thinking, oh God, what the hell? I mean, let's face it. Christmas is now coming too early. Shops start having Christmas decorations up in October. Why would we want a second one in March? We look forward to bringing all the Christmas decorations down on the 12th day of Christmas. In our family, in our household, we put it up at the beginning of December. That's it. Why would I want to have it, take it down for two months and put it back up in March? Christmas 2 was the worst thing ever and you excited kids and parents probably hated you for it. Number two, rescue. So near the end of the film, Santa's trying to chase down Patch and Joe in their car, which is going to explode. So how does he rescue them? Well, it doesn't make sense, which is why it's on this list. They go under Patch's car, up, over, back round, and back onto the car. Well, that's, what, what, why did you not just stop when you were onto the car? Patch, jump down. It would have been safer, especially as the car blew up while you were still on your way back round. You put their lives at risk when you were already under there. Just get under there, stop, shout, rescue, go away, car goes boom. That would have made more sense, but just to try and add this more tension and excitement, you just put something stupid in its place. Number one, Dead Space. Now, any fans of my show would know I'm a huge, massive sci-fi fan, as you can tell by my lovely Christmas jumper. So I know you can't breathe in space. And in 1985, that was common knowledge. So how do they kill off the bad guy? Well, he keeps floating and floating, goes up into space, and he's still alive screaming. No, he would have been dead. End off. If you wanted something funny towards it, making magic wear off and he's landed in prison elsewhere or in another country, more something funny, but in space, that's just droll, boring, and everyone just sees through it and it's not funny. Final thoughts. Now, doing some research on this film, one of the things that I've actually found out is Roger Ebert, who is probably the most harshest film critic there ever is, and it's very hard for him to like a film, liked this film, and yet it still failed. Why? Well, he did say it best. It captures the heart of Christmas, which it does. It captures the spirit and the essence of Father Christmas, which it does. But the problem is, its target audience that would enjoy this film is little children. Older children and parents probably won't enjoy this film as much. And strange enough, he's got a point. Now, watching this now in my 30s, I didn't get as much incitement out of it as I did when I was a kid. Saying that, I still did enjoy the first half of the film when it was about Santa Claus, watching the chronicles of him, how he became 
it was brilliant. But when it gets to the modern day and the adventures of Patch and BZ, it ruins it. And that's the part that lets this film down, is the ending of this film. You try to just to tack on some tension. This film didn't need it. It was brilliant the way it was. Seeing the joy in the elves making the toys, seeing the joy of Santa and his wife. By the way, the casting of those two was perfect. If you didn't know any better, I would swear that the actor and actress who played uh, Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus were married in real life. They weren't, but their on-screen chemistry was perfect and I bought into it. Even as an adult, that first part of the film is perfect. It's very hard to actually find a flaw with that. It's always going to be the end of this film. That being said, one thing I normally love and something I haven't brought up for ages is the music. It was fantastic. It was brilliant, it was joyful, it was Christmassy, it was perfect for this film and I loved uh, the music and that's what gets me going sometimes and that worked in this film. The set design was brilliant. When the first time you walked into uh, Santa's workshop I was thinking that must have been amazing to work on it because it looked so awesome on the screen so I can imagine what those actors were like working in there. It looked amazing. There is so much good about this film. It is just ruined by the ending. And I, I know I've said that enough times, but I maintain that's what ended this, ruined this film. That's why this film failed, is because of that ending. But what am I going to rank it? See, I'm in two minds, because I want to say it's a good film, but it's not, it's a very topsy-turvy. So I'm going to sit on the fence. I'm going to give it a six. Six out of ten berries. Now, if someone made a, a like a cut version of it where you just cut out that whole ending, I'd probably give it higher, but they didn't. And this is what we we're left with. So yeah, six out of ten berries. <sighs> Am I being harsh? Let me know. Write it in the comments. But in the meantime, because between now and next week's video, it will be Christmas. I would like to say Merry Christmas from myself and everyone else here at Berry Manor to one, my girlfriend Dawn and her daughter who helps me out a lot. We all would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Thank you very much for being with my journey throughout this whole year. It's very meaningful and I'm very grateful for every single person who's watched my videos. It means a lot to me. So um, until then, I will see you next Sunday with the greatest Christmas movie ever. Take care, bye-bye.